When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. What's going on, Matty? Hey, Tony. Oh, I'm glad to be back here. I'm glad to be sitting down. Really, we were just talking in the green room about how we're enjoying doing this podcast. and I'm really enjoying it. I look forward to, you know, I felt like, you know, sometimes we go like a month in between recording, right? So it's it's yeah. nice to be back here and being able to do it. So Yeah, I look forward to it. I'm always excited about it. And every time I think of something else to talk about, I jot it down in my iPhone notes and Sometimes it's at a weird hour of the night, so I uh, appreciate you putting up with that. <laughs> but, yeah, it's uh, all good. I was thinking about a funny story that in some crazy way does relate back to business, but <clears throat> okay, so I bought this golf cart from a from a yard sale. The the one that we rode on whenever you came <laughs> came down. Yeah. But I bought it for 500 bucks at a yard sale. And um, I had to go get new batteries on it. But for a, for a long time, it worked. But I would cart it around on this, tra- on this trailer, and um, I would always pull it up on the trailer nose first. And it has it has that back seat on it, so it has the platform for you to put your feet. And the, the back of the trailer, the gate would never close all the way. And, um, man, I would have to use these ratchet straps to – ratchet the the back gate to the golf cart to just hold the the gate up Mm -hmm. and i did this for like i don't know i think i did it for a year (laughs) give or take (laughs) um so it needed batteries so i took it to the the store up the road and i was pulling in and he the guy Took it in, and uh, it was actually when I went back to pick it up. He's like, "You need help loading it up." I was like, "No, man, I just pulled it up nose first. I and uh, so I pulled it up, and uh, he saw that I was ratcheting the the gate. Once I got it loaded up, I was ratcheting <laughs> the gate. He's like, "Hey, um, why don't you just back it on there?" <laughs> and I was like, "You know, you never want to be wrong about something, and you never want to." be embarrassed but i was like no i don't think it'll work and he said man I, I looking at it here if you just back it up there that platform that keeps hitting the gate will go over the front of the trailer and that'll give you the room you need to close the gate and yeah. remember i've been riding around like this for a year and one time the ratchets fell off they like snapped because of the weight mm-hmm. and the 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 golf cart fell off the trailer and flipped over in the road. (laughs) And uh, granted, this is a $500 golf cart. So it's not like I flipped over a, a, you know, a brand new one. But so I've been through all this, this turmoil with this cart and this golf cart around. And um, I pulled it off and then I backed it up. And sure enough, man, the, the platform cleared the top of the trailer it closes no problem now. <laughs> like I was so embarrassed, but I was, I was happy because at first when he said that, I was like, no, nah, that's not going to work. And he's like, man, yeah, he just kept on like, man, just, just give it a try. And, uh, and man, I've been doing it ever since. And that's, that was been, that's been four or five years ago. So I rode around all this time with this, this rigged up situation that I had. Yeah. Either I didn't take the time to kind of analyze it or I just, I'm for what I feel dumb as hell, but I mean, I got a solution to the problem and it came from somebody else. So I was thinking about that, you know, business is a lot like that. And sometimes you can't see the solution to the problem that that's right in front of your face. Yeah. And sometimes you do need another perspective, you know? Yeah. I just like thinking about that golf cart situation. Like you, it could be with anything, right? Like it could be your, your price book, right? Like, you're just stuck on something right and without asking for advice or asking someone else to look at the problem with you you know how much time did you waste ratchet strapping 
those those uh those ramps up to the golf cart or how much time did you waste when you flipped it over onto the road and you had to flip it back over and get it back on the trailer um and all that could have been solved just by asking someone hey what do you think i should do about this you know um so i think it relates perfectly to business because in business there's all these things that that we have to do right yeah that sometimes we're going to need we're going to get stuck or we're going to need a different perspective on it and just by asking someone they could have a completely different perspective on it right yeah and they could they could have been there before and you remember when you talked about sub items with me you were mm-hmm. like in service titan there is a a way to i'm going to try to explain sub items really quickly um in service titan there's a way to create a custom repair and it it's time and material but instead of showing the customer that it's time and material you create a sub item and you create the sub item using time and material based on what it's actually going to take and how much material it's going to take but the customer doesn't see that because it's in a sub item they see the summary that you create and it's custom to whatever you're doing but they see the price that you created. They don't see, you know, two hours at $400 in material. They see what Mm -hmm. you want them to see. And when you showed me that, it was, it was a total game changer. And now all my guys, they didn't know about it. And it's just a, it's now a way of doing things when we have a unique situation where it requires a time and material price where the customer doesn't see that and they don't freak out about it because it doesn't say time and material. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just like a little thing that you didn't know about. Right. Yeah. And it took time to learn it. You know, you can't just say, Hey, why don't you do sub items? You didn't just say, why don't you do sub items? And I was like, Oh, okay. Well, I didn't think of that. You had to show me. And, <laughs> and I was like, I don't, that doesn't make sense to me. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. And then, you know, you walk me through it and th- there are a lot of, examples like that and by the way that turns into a lot of profit like it's not like you're doing something for nothing that that turns yeah. into a lot of generated income but you also and, and for to- the people listening at home just like that quick story right that was the first time that me and you ever spoke on the phone yeah we weren't we weren't friends yet we we barely knew each other we were just in this same group right and you reached out, you were like, I'm having a problem with this. And I hopped on the phone with you and I explained it to you. And then the light bulb goes off. Right. So it's not, it doesn't necessarily have to be your coach's eyes or another, you know, it just has to be someone that's looking at a similar problem to you on a daily basis. Right. That's the power of, to me, that's the power of MDP. Cause it's not just a coaching program you're now surrounded with peers that are going through the same thing that you develop these relationships with and they can solve your problem just by you asking it. Right. Like me and you did that a lot together and that's how we became so close is solving each other's problems by a different perspective on that issue. Yeah. And you go through things at different times. So you may be going through something. I know that our busy seasons are different. So if you're super slow and I have come out of a super slow time, it helps to kind of have somebody to talk, talk each other through, talk each other off the ledge. If you, if you will, those are, those are crazy times, but you also have to be willing to do the work. You know, you have to be willing to admit to yourself, this is going to take some time to learn and it's going to be more work than I probably want to do. But if you look at it from the perspective of this is for a finite amount of time, whatever it is, it could be anything in business. You have to take the time to to learn it and to implement it. And you can't just wait for it to fix itself. You know, a lot there's a lot of wishful thinking yeah. in business sometimes. Hey plumbing pro, you wouldn't plumb a house without a blueprint. So why are you trying to build your plumbing business without one? Grab your free copy of my Million Dollar Plumber Blueprint. In it, I lay out the exact specs on how to build a successful, self-sustaining, and very profitable plumbing business. Don't risk years of wasted time and money and failure. Grab your Million Dollar Plumber Blueprint now, and it's free. My gift to you for simply being a Coach's Corner follower. 
go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash free and plumb like a champion. I mean, let, let's even like relate it to like normal life. Like when I was younger, right? And the problem would come up, right? Mm-hmm. Say I was 18, 19, 20, even earlier, right? Like say when I was in high school, I get in trouble, whatever. I need my mom to sign something, right? Mm-hmm. And rather than confronting that head on, a lot of the human psyche will, let's put that off. Let's put that off. And it's not procrastination. It's just not wanting to deal with the issue. Um, mm-hmm. So like, whatever, say you got a tax bill from the IRS in the mail, right? And instead of opening it and paying it, you just kind of like push it to the side because you don't want to think about it right now. Yeah. Um, but that kind of thinking is so detrimental in business because it, it would be easy, like this whole process, it would be easy to kick things down the line and just cherry pick the things that are going to be easier to do. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, Oh, I want to do branding. Cause it's going to look like I'm trying really hard or I want to hire guys. Cause it's going to look like I'm trying really hard. Um, or I want to hire a CSR. So it looks like I'm advancing, but if you're skipping the meat of the things, right. Like the taskmaster, your why, right. Like you, you, you've told me about that, how you kind of just glazed over your why. Cause you didn't think it was that important. Yeah. And then you find out later on, hey, this actually is pretty important. Uh, yeah. That's why it's module two. <laughs> yeah, I got to have a real strong reason for going through all this stuff that I'm going through. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, and and also, too, uh, you have to be able to, uh, like, fixing your pricing. Like, let's just say fixing your pricing. Mm-hmm. You have to know what expenses you are incurring to come up with a price. And that's just one example. And that takes work. Like you have to look back through your profit and loss statement. You have to know how to read a profit and loss statement. The profit and loss statement has to be accurate and categorized correctly. And and all that takes, it's not, it's not like mentally difficult. It's just time consuming, you know, Mm -hmm. but once you have it and you can, at a glance, look at your expenses and say, yeah, this is, I have, <clears throat> I have a problem and this is where it is. Mm-hmm. You know? But so many times <clears throat> early on in my career, I said, man, I really wish I knew why I wasn't making money, but I didn't know. I didn't know how to figure that out. And if I would have, if I had somebody to kind of look at things in my business from another perspective, it would probably be an example like you introduced those uh, sub items. Well, somebody else could have said, well, yeah, man, here's, here's the thing. This is the thing. So just fix Mm -hmm. this and then see what happens. But often we just fumble through, you know, just, and even if you're just at work digging a ditch, that feels productive and it feels like you're doing something, you know, Mm -hmm. and you're not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, use, use the example of a ditch, man. Like you feel productive because you're digging a hole, right? But how much would it cost you to hire someone else to dig that hole while you were working on fixing your pricing or building, you know, building your price book or, you know, that's just one example, but it's an easy one because it's in the beginning of, of this process of, Hey, I need to figure out how I make money and why I'm not making money. Uh, pricing is pretty important when you're trying to figure out why you're not making money. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's just like an easy one to hone in on. And it's like, it's a system then, right? Like it, it you can't scale without developing that system, right? right? I don't care if you got 20 guys on the road, right? If you don't have that price book, your life's going to be a disaster because there's no uniform set of pricing, right? You're telling the guys, eh, it's going to be about this an hour and about this and about that. And you mark materials up this much and they're going to be trying to figure it out on the fly. Mm -hmm. No consistency whatsoever. No. So systems is a good, we say systems all the time, but when you drill down on that, on that subject, another example would be like booking the call for today. That sounds simple enough but then you get on the phone or your CSR gets on the phone. And if you don't have a system in place or a call script in place to book every call for today, 
You don't know how to book every call for the day. You're looking and, oh, we're booked. We're booked for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And that used to be comfortable, you know. That used to be super comfortable. Oh, we're booked for a few days. I'm 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 okay. But really, where you should be is having that call script in place to where that that customer calls in and you book it for today up to a certain point in the day. And it's over and over and over again every day. At three o'clock, mm -hmm. call the customers that we absolutely know we're not going to get to and try to reschedule them. Three o'clock in my mind feels like they have at least, you know, an hour or two. If they absolutely do not want to wait, they can get somebody else. Yeah. I want to give them that. Mm -hmm. But that's a system we created, you know. Can you get to us today? Absolutely, we can get to you today. Have we done work for you before? And then you on and on and on. The same thing. That's a system. Mm -hmm. And that takes work to create. It takes work to practice. And it takes work to be consistent. But once you do it for a little while, it's it's robotic and it's automated and it works because you're not just coming up with answers and trying to um, come up with a different answer every time somebody calls. Yeah. Well, take like, you know, I call Wally Plumman. I'm like, I want to know how much it is for a new water heater. What are they yeah. going to say? They're going to say. Absolutely. We can help you with that. Have we done work for you before? And then yeah. you regain control. Yep. That's that's a, a, a mini system in place. Finding and hiring the right tech for your team can be challenging. Applicant Pro makes it so simple and easy. Your personal Applicant Pro hiring professional will do the brunt of the work for you. Writing job ads that will get you maximum applicant exposure. Manage the advertising of your jobs to over 20 major and local job boards. Even a pre-hire risk assessment is included to ensure your candidate matches the role expectations and your company values. To learn more about Applicant Pro and to take advantage of a special discount just for Coach's Corner listeners, Go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash applicant pro. Price objections. Like if your guys go into a, a situation and if they don't have a price book, they're not going to know what the price is. They're not going to have options and they're not going to know what to do when the customer is like, that doesn't make sense to me. That's way too expensive. Mm -hmm. Cause there's a system for dealing with customers price objections. Yep. But not without a price book. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, systems are just super important to the business in general. Um, and in developing those systems, it's you, you need outside perspective sometimes, you know, like we were we were super slow. This is probably a month and a half ago now. And I'm just, you know, that's that's typically when you start to look for the problems, right? Like there's a problem somewhere, right? Is it the phones? Is it the marketing? What's going on? You don't know until you know, really. Mm -hmm. um, but all of a sudden, you know, phones aren't ringing as much. And what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? So I didn't go to my marketing company and say, hey, the phones aren't ringing. Well, I did. And they didn't really do much about it. Um, I went to another marketing company. I said, hey, can you do an audit of what they're doing? Right. And what's going on with our digital footprint and all that? And tell me where you think we land. So he did that audit and he came back and he said, you know, this is what I would do. This is what I do to improve this, that, the other thing. And man, we signed on with him and, you know, our, I mean, I think our overall digital conversions just about tripled, whether that's from Facebook, Instagram, Google, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, if I had just buried my head in the sand and said, oh, it's going to break at some point, because we, we kind of tell our guys that, right? Like it's, there's slow seasons, it's cyclical, you're going to, but that doesn't mean that you need to stop working the problem, right? Like me and you have had many conversations on what do we do during those slow times, right? And it's, you know, it's calling those follow-ups. It's, uh you know, following up on estimates that you put out there the last couple of weeks and you know, dropping the price on them, trying to get the guys out there to do some work, right? Um, yeah. But again, those are systems that we created because we had a problem. And in talking to each other, it was like, hey, I got this problem, man. And you said, oh, well, are you calling the follow-ups? You know, um, even I was on the phone with Bo the other day and, you know, it's, it's good to have a sounding board because it's like, 
I'm telling them, oh, you know, we were slow, whatever. And, oh, you doing your follow-ups? Yeah, we're doing follow-ups. Who's doing the follow-ups, right? That's a question I had never even thought of before. Mm -hmm. Like, I have the technicians do the follow-ups. I think you have Rusty do them, right? Um, well, it just, you know, and that's a system in, in my business that needs a little bit of tooling because uh, we'll have our CSR do them. Um, and that's more of a system that's created to generate during slow times. But we also have a an email com email campaign where when estimates aren't sold, they get an email, you know, a day later, three days later. And then it's it's spaced out to where they either say that they're not going to do it or they accept one of the jobs. So the email campaign is the follow up system that's automated and then we 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 have uh our csr call if there's a specific estimate that we're wondering about mm -hmm. yeah but so, also yeah go ahead sorry no i was just gonna say so we have the technicians do them and you have the csr do them and that's but i had never even thought of that before before he asked me who's doing the follow-ups Mm -hmm. Like to me, it was just natural, like, oh, they've built some sort of rapport with the customer already. They've met them face to face. Like, I'm just going to have them do it. Um, so, yeah, no, that's just an, an interesting thing that it's like by bouncing things off of people, like having this fresh set of eyes on the problem, right? Like exactly what we're talking about. That's how you, that's how you drill down on what's going to work and what's not going to work. Yeah. And, and just like you, like you said earlier, um, our, impression our digital impressions tripled just the fact that you know that is proof that there's a system in place that you can track it mm -hmm. i've been in a position before where i was just emotionally reacting to the fact that we weren't getting calls and that's mm -hmm. not a good place to be that's a terrible mental state to be in when you're just like it must just be our mark it must just be our marketer um the phone's not ringing our market and there must be something wrong with our with our lsas you know, mm -hmm. um, but since then, you know, a lot, a lot, you, there's a lot of growth that comes out of when you're slow because you're pushed to a, you're pushed into a corner where you have to make a decision and you have to do things. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I did was, you know, we were, we we're with search Kings and they taught me how to read the report, the analytics report of our impressions <clears throat> our cost per impression and our conversions. So I can tell when our name pops up in a search, I can tell when we convert that impression to them actually calling us. And I can tell when, if the call was booked. So just knowing that you're, you're way ahead of the game, even though, even though that's something as business owners, we should know. Most people don't know that. No, I would say. And you wouldn't know until you ask the question. And that kind of just ties back into the whole theme that we're going with here is you can't solve problems without asking for help solving problems, right? Yeah. So Search Kings, you know, they maybe, they they were just like, hey, he probably knows, right? He's been in business for 16 years. He probably knows. But until you ask that question, hey, can you guys teach me what these things mean? Because I don't really know what they mean. And I kind of need to, to effectively market this company. Yeah. Well, and just um, I was showing somebody how to create, um, not create, but showing somebody um, how to calculate your booking rate or how to just how to reclassify calls so you can get an accurate booking rate in service mm -hmm. time. And just knowing that, like if you feel like your phone's not ringing, that's that's an emotional decision. But if you can look and say, well, we had 15 calls today out of those. 15 calls, 10 of them were bookable and we only booked five, you know? So just knowing that is something that I was able to show um, one of my friends and you just, you just are better, better equipped to make decisions when you know the facts and you're not just making the, the, an emotional decision is like the worst, the worst you can make. Because you don't know, you just think you know. Yeah. Because well, that could be a CSR problem. Yeah, it could be a CSR problem. It could be a 
dispatch fee problem, right? Like there's, there's now, now you have tangible things that you can look at and analyze and say, this is how we're going to fix the problem of 50% booking rate. Yeah. But if you don't know there's a 50% booking rate, you're, you're just throwing darts at an empty wall, hoping to hit a bullseye. Yeah. And it could also, I mean, you have to go through the steps of finding the problem. It could just be a, a phone carrier problem, a yeah. disconnect problem, something, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of things that happen when you make a phone call to us, it's forwarded from, you know, our office number through service Titan back to our office so it can pick up the recording. And, you know, sometimes those things break. So you just have to go through the checklist of things. What, why, why is it slow? What, what, why is the phone not ringing? You know? And, yeah. you know, you just go, go down. That's a rabbit hole worth going down. You know, we got spring break coming up. Um, Normally, it's kind of cools off as far as the phone phones ringing during cert, uh, spring break because everybody's ready for a break. That's exactly what it says. They're ready <laughs> for a break, you know. And yeah. I think you and I were talking about that at one point. Um, like, why is it slow? Why is it slow? And, and I can't remember which one of us was slow, but we were kind of bouncing ideas off of each other. And you're like, "Is it? Did, are the kids out of school? Or is this? You know? Yeah. You just kind of." You know, having somebody to be like, what? It's not just that nobody likes your company anymore and they just decided to stop calling and everybody's boycotting your company. <laughs> you know, that's not, the, that's not the issue. Um, But just, you know, asking for help. Like, what could it be? There's always a reason. You just have to find the reason. Yeah. Yeah. And there's almost like a workflow that you have to set up as a system. And it's like, all right, so it's slow. Let's look at booking rate, how many calls we're actually getting versus how many we're booking and then call volume in general, right? Mm -hmm. Our call is call volume down or is booking rate down? And then that's two separate rabbit holes you're going to go down. But say it's, say it's the, it's a volume problem. Well, now we're looking into marketing. What's caused this dip? Um, and then you work down, you figure out what's going on, you try to fix it. And then you also have, like you said, a system in place where, Hey, it's slow. We're not getting any calls. We're going to start doing follow-ups, right? We're going to be seeing what we can do. We're going to, you know, Ashley really does a good job of talking about what do you do in those slow times, right? And she has a whole list of things that we do in those slow times. It's like, you know, we're on the Facebook groups, right? Where, you know, someone's post, oh, who needs a plumber? Oh, us, you know, um, we're, you know, we have different marketing campaigns, drip campaigns that go out during that time frame through email and stuff like that. And, um, but again, there's that's a system that we came up with because it was, hey, we're slow. Why are we slow? What's going on? How do we fix it? Yeah. And we put a system in place for next time this happens. You know, it doesn't take many times for you to be slow for a sustained period of time for you to create a system to never be in that situation again, at least mentally. Like if, if we're mm -hmm. ever in this situation again, I'll have a plan because nothing, nothing will send that anxiety through the roof in business at, like it does when the phone stops ringing, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of problems are worth having, but <laughs> that's a bad, I mean, that's a, that's a, just a tough one, but you know, it's happened to me and the more that happens, the more systems we try to put in place. That way you don't have to be trying to run around trying to find the fire extinguisher when the fire is going on, you know? <laughs> and, yeah. But that's a, that's a question that I get a lot is I, I need help with systems. And maybe sometimes people don't realize that something just as small as having a call script, that's a system. And mm -hmm. you build upon that, you build upon, you know, uh, how to book your day out, what to say to the customer when you need to put them in a time slot. We do four hour time slots. So it was just, we were having too many phone calls back to the office saying, Hey, I had a, I had a appointment, you know, between 10 and 12 and it's, you know, 12, 15, four hour windows just worked for us, but you know, mm -hmm. there were a lot of conversations and trial and error 
Um, but that became a system, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think it, it all comes down to, uh, you know, like you said, willing to put in the work for like a finite period of time to create that system. And then all of those systems individually are going to come together and that's what's going to become your company. Right. Yeah. Cause um, you can't and, be and, super busy with something all the time. You know what I mean? Something's yeah. broken there. If you're, if you never have time to work on your business, so, mm -hmm. so let's figure out why and put a system yep. in place. Yeah, for sure. All right, man. Well, I think that's all I have on systems. You got anything else? No. You ready to get out of here? Yeah, let's do it. All right. See you next time. All right. Bye, guys. All right. Well, that does it for this episode of The Coach's Corner. Make sure to like and subscribe below. And make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Thanks for stopping by.